Is your website loading slow in 2019 and losing you up to 50% of your sales? Don't worry, this video is gonna be excellent for you because it's gonna give you 15 of my top hacks on improving site speed. At the end of this video, you'll have enough information to improve your site speed and could be increasing your leads by up to 50%. Before you start work, you need to get a benchmark of how well your website is currently performing. We recommend using Google Developer Tools and a website called Pingdom in tandem to get two reports and get your benchmark. So I'm gonna put some URLs up here and you can go to those websites, type in your website and get a report. So you can get a report both for desktop performance and a report for mobile performance and with over 60% of the internet now on mobile, you should really be focusing on the mobile performance. Okay, so what are the five things you're gonna learn in this video? We are gonna talk about crushing image size. We're gonna look at how you can host video to get better performance. We're gonna look at inline styling and that will dramatically improve site speed. We're gonna look at lazy loading techniques. And the last one in this episode is reducing redirects. Okay, so the first place you should be looking at improving site speed is crushing the image size of the photographs that you're uploading to your website in the first place. Because if you upload an enormous image, when someone lands on your web page, they're gonna to have to download that. We recommend using Save for Web with Photoshop, and the reason why we like it is you can reduce the image by 30%, or reduce it down to 30% of the original file size without losing much degradation of the image quality. So the images are still gonna look great, but they will load incredibly fast because they could be as little as 25 kilobyte compared to maybe one or two meg. With video marketing becoming ever important for your online marketing, how you host video is really important. Don't get tempted to host it yourself. There are three excellent tools you can use for hosting video, and there are three different reasons why you'd have each one. So number one is YouTube. YouTube is the largest video hosting platform on the planet currently. Now the disadvantages of having YouTube as your video host is that it looks like YouTube. So it doesn't fit into the brand identity probably of your business. On the flip side of that, because it is a well-recognized platform, people will be happy to play video and they'll feel secure that you're using YouTube. There are some urban myths around YouTube uh, people saying that you can't hide your competitors. Well, you can. You can place a query string after your URL of your video, and that will restrict what content's being played afterwards. Now, this video is not going to go into details about how you can do that, but I will put some links in my YouTube video, and you can click them and find out what I'm talking about there. The second provider we would recommend would be Vimeo. Now, Vimeo is also a massive video hosting software. The advantages of using video is that you can brand your video so it looks just like your visual identity. The downside is you're gonna start paying for bandwidth or hosting. So the more often your video gets served and watched, your costs are gonna increase. But the advantage of that is it's gonna look like you've produced a very slick professional product. The number three product we would recommend for video hosting is Wistia. Now, not a lot of people have heard about Wistia and it is probably the most expensive product. But the advantages of Wistia is you can put call to actions within your video and start to measure matrix of when people bail out of a video or do not click a call to action. It's a very powerful video marketing tool. Number three was inline styling. Now inline styling is when you place the style of what you want your web page to look like directly within the HTML. This is a classic amateur HTML designer kind of workflow. They get lazy and they put how the web page should look directly in the HTML. And anything concerning the way your website looks should be filed within a cascading style sheet, you know, a CSS file, and that should be hosted remotely from your HTML. Now that sounds quite technical, but what we're saying here is that your HTML gets 
refreshed every time someone looks at your website if you've not got caching on and the CSS gets cached. So that means if your web page is very, very small and the CSS is only requested once, it speeds up the website enormously. Number four on my list is lazy loading. If you can lazy load your images, i.e. when you scroll through your web page, they are loaded as and required when the user needs them, it dramatically improves the site speed and user experience. And Google looks at user experience as a key metric of Google ranking of search engine optimization. So if you can use lazy loading, I really recommend that. I will put a link in this video about articles on how to do lazy loading and implement it on your web page. Number five, reducing redirects. Imagine if you're driving down a road and you see a sign for a junction and you were to pull off at that junction and then all of a sudden at the last minute it says, no, don't pull off here, go another junction. And you get to the next junction and then the next junction, it says go to the next junction. And this happens maybe five or 10 times. Eventually you get off the motorway where you needed to get off. Now, when you create content on your website and you decide to change the name of that content in the future, i.e. you change an article name or a blog location, you are forcing Google to redirect, go to another location to find the content. So you're creating a hop and each hop slows down the website. So when you create articles or content for your website, think very carefully, strategically, about the name you're gonna give the content and give it one name and don't rename it again in the future. That will reduce your redirects. This was part one, the beginner's guide to improving site speed in 2019. Next week's episode is intermediate and we start to look at server settings and this will dramatically improve site speed. So watch out for that video. I've been John Pankhurst, The Morning Marketing Man. If you found the value in this video useful, please like or share on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the subscribe button because every new subscriber I get really encourages me to add more content back to the community. If you're watching on LinkedIn, please click the like button because every time you like it, it gets shared with your network. Have a great day.